Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. So today we have the great pleasure of hearing from Mr. Ryan Fowler from Orion Media Group. Make social media video easy. Video is what we get told we need to use on social media, but it's often perceived as hard to do. In this excite, Ryan will break down five steps to help you create your video easily. For those of you who don't know Ryan, Ryan Fowler is the founder of Orion Media Group and an experienced photographer and videographer working and creating and creating small business owners to develop effective video strategies that guide customers along the customer journey. He has created a system that gets the right message to the right person through a strategic video framework. Ryan's clients have seen the benefits of his system across a wide range of industries, and now he's going to share a piece of this process with you. Everybody, please welcome Ryan Fowler. Good morning, everyone. I want to give you a few tips on making social media easy or easier to create and share. Now, this isn't going to be technical jargon or anything of teaching you how to produce video, but these are some of the steps that when you're planning social media and developing your strategy, these are the things that you actually need to start to implement and look at before you even hit record. Um, because if you go into it with the right strategy, it will help make your video easier. So how many of you in the room by show of hands, real or virtual, uh, have been told that you need to use video in your business? Definitely. Pretty much every hand should be going up. I can only see a few of you on the screen at any one point. Um, but yeah, I know that there's always hands going up whenever I ask that question. So there is a reason that many of you have actually been told that, and it's because video is the direction that social media is going. So things like platforms such as TikTok that has had huge growth and, in, and just continues to grow and be an ever growing platform. Uh, and especially Instagram as well. It started off as a photo platform. It's now making a full shift over to video. So it really is the trend of where things are and where things are going. And it's something that is very important to be using in your business. So why video would be the right choice for you? Now, the opportunity of it is that it can connect with your audience to develop a digital like, no and trust factor. It helps you connect in an authentic way with the people that you want to connect with. It also speaks to the needs, wants, desires, problems, and factors that your audience face that you know how to help with. When you can answer someone's question and be able to articulate it better than they can, then you're being positioned as the expert in that space and the industry. The other thing that a lot of people don't know is that it uses, or don't even think of really, is that it uses multiple sensors at any one point. So being able to use visual and auditory connection really helps people resonate with the message. They get to see you, they get to hear you, kind of feels like you're reaching through the screen when it's done properly. So uh, they get that real emotional, empathetic connection as well. So they really do resonate with you and it positions you as an expert in that space. Then you've also got the scalability and the marketing aspect of create a video once, you can have that conversation a million times with, with the people that are watching it. Instead of having a one-to-one -one conversation, which still has a very strong place in any form of marketing, but video will help build on that and engage with your client. Then the other side is you've got the opportunity of evergreen marketing. So you create a video once, and it stays out there to have that conversation over time and continues to market for you without you having to continually push, create, and put more out there, especially if you're doing paid marketing as well. So now I just wanna move on to five tips that can help you really implement video and the strategy of video better into your business. So number one is know your audience. If you know your audience, then 
you can really understand, connect and resonate with them. Yes, you can start by understanding their demographics, things like their age, gender, location, family, you know, the, the type of person that they are. But it's not until you really get into the psychographics of uh, your audience, your ideal client, customer, that you really start to understand what they need and what you can produce to help them and position you. Like I said before, if you can articulate someone's problem better than what they can, then they will instantly see you as the expert in that space. So when you start to actually understand the psychographics, you've got people's needs, wants, problems, questions they ask, what they want to learn and the language that they use. Once you understand that, you can effectively answer the problems that they have. So this helps in your content planning. And as you'll see, as I go through the rest of these tips is once you go through this, the psychographics, your content planning and everything else starts to fall in after this. So using the needs, wants, problems, you can start to understand what they need. Then you can break that down into the topics within that. And that's how you start to create effective content planning in your business. And number two is to know your subject. It's all well and great to know your audience and know what they want. But if you don't know your subject, you can't help them not in an effective way. So when you do know your audience, you can understand what to create for them. But the best thing is to combine that with your experience, your depth of knowledge, your expertise, and have your audience watch you to say, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. Something that I'll hear a lot is people that do a lot of webinars, or training videos, and, and even this, was in a, this came up in a, uh, the latest podcast episode I did which was when you can position yourself and people can see that you know what you're talking about, they'll say, oh my God, you know so much stuff. <laughs> stuff is usually the term that gets used and they will see you and come to you over and over again when they can see the value that you can deliver to them to help answer their problem. So number three is to create for your primary platform. Now, what I mean by this is... If you have TikTok and your primary audience is on TikTok, create for that platform. If you're using Facebook as your main medium, your main outlet on social media to share video, create for that platform. Same thing with YouTube, create for that platform. Now, YouTube and TikTok, there's a big difference between them. TikTok will usually have 30 to 60 second videos, absolute maximum. And usually for many people that's done on a phone, it's not overly professionally produced because it does start to take away a bit of that authenticity from the platform. If you're creating for YouTube, there's a lot more production. The videos go for 10, 15, 20 minutes and people are there to engage with that content at that point. So when you can create to achieve the best result with your primary platform, the algorithms are more likely to show your content. If you're creating for the audience at where they're at, and again, this comes back to knowing your audience, the algorithms will continue to push your content further and further. So number four is to repurpose what you create. And this comes back to your planning. When you're creating for your primary platform, look at what you're creating. For, I'll use the YouTube video as an example. If you've got a 10 minute video on YouTube, you can look at how that can be broken down and repurposed over and over again so that you don't have to sit there, set the camera up or, or try and rewrite a blog post. You can just use the content that you've already got. So let's just say this 10 minute video, you can turn it into three two minute videos, maybe four 60 second videos, um, a few 90 second versions as well, have it transcribed or use your script to create a blog post, pull little bits of it out for social media content and quote yourself. And then you've also got the option for quote cards. So the limit on what you can do with one piece of well-crafted content is almost ongoing for such a long period of time. It's not that you're creating one video for one purpose. You're creating one video for multiple purposes over a long period of time and being able to repurpose that content again and again in future. 
And the last one is to be yourself. Now, this is probably something that um, you're probably all going to nod along and, and say, oh, yeah, you know, I can be myself on camera. This comes from experience that most people are not themselves on camera. They'll put on a, a radio voice that they think they have to sound really deep and amazing. And <laughs> I can see a few faces laughing at the moment because we all know it's true. Um, so if you're not being yourself, it can come across as inauthentic. It takes away from the message you're actually trying to use and trying to portray. Like right now I'm speaking as I would normally speak to anyone. And when you can come across as yourself, be authentic, share your knowledge, it will connect with the right audience and they will continue to connect with you over and over again. So that's it from me. Thank you. I do hope that you've all enjoyed this. And I think we're pretty much right on our 10 minutes. Uh, I'm hoping so anyway. Um, and I'll just stop my share here and open up the floor to any questions. Well done. First of all, I just want to say thank you, Ryan. Superb job. I love it. You kept it really simple, but so effective and so insightful. Um, any questions for Ryan? Feel free yes, to... I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Over. I love that. Thank you, Ryan. Excellent presentation. Uh, my question is, do you recommend any good video editing apps for phone? Uh, if you're on an iPhone, probably iMovie. Uh, you can get one called Adobe Premiere Rush. Uh, they're the ones that I've used, but I haven't really used many others. Most of the stuff I do is on a computer. <laughs> uh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. Awesome. Um, any other questions for Ryan? We've got plenty of time today, so we can dive in. Go for it, Paul. Uh, not so much a question, but just uh, some feedback, Ryan. I think you're right, mate, for some reason. <laughs> 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 totally. I could have used that script. Um, so I can back up everything that Ryan has said today as being 110% correct. Oh, Thanks, fantastic. Paul. I can see you laughing and cheering in the uh, side of my screen there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick one for you. Yep. Um, obviously, you know, when you work along multiple with multiple platforms, um, the algorithm favors video to different degrees. Hmm. And I've noticed lately, could just be my videos because people don't like them, but <laughs> I've just noticed that LinkedIn is not favoring video very much at all. Do you have any info on that or? Um, I've not looked specifically at LinkedIn's video sort of connection. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they do, they are doing more video now. Uh, mm -hmm. You used to not even be able to do videos in advertising right. and in ads. Uh, now you can. Mm -hmm. So they are starting to develop more of the video side of things. And I think that will continue to grow. I think they're starting to see the trend yeah. shift as well. Nice. Um, but I'd say that their video probably is going to be a bit shorter. Right. Uh, then, you know, it, it wouldn't be a 10 minute video kind of thing. It would, it would be more of a two minute video. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Paul, go for it. I, I didn't like, yeah, you, you're right, Ryan. Not, but I think also because LinkedIn's more for the business platform, um, that it's about knowing your audience there because uh, I tend not to have time to watch long videos on LinkedIn. Yep. So I tend to get, Cut, cut them short, whereas the audience that's on on the Facebook might goof off and, and watch more videos. Yeah, definitely. I'm finding, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, mm. you know, all the other platforms are hugely favour video, but LinkedIn mm. still favours scripting, just, just text or yeah. maybe a graphic, but I'm mm. sure that will change over time as well. Yeah, they, they'll eventually me, change. Though. Everyone Don't seems stop. to be getting on the same trend. Yeah, oh, but without a doubt, video is the way of the future. Without a, It's here already, without a doubt. Any other questions, guys? You've got uh, this great guru here in front of us. Any I've got questions? a question, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Yep. Um, so with my social media, like I've been using Facebook and Instagram mainly because um, that's what I believe, like that's what I believe my target. I'm a 20 to 40-year-old um, men mainly. You know, might be going through challenges or separations or whatever that might be. Um so there's a there's thought out there that obviously like that TikTok is more aimed at obviously younger younger demographic and I just wanted to ask you like age like the age groups and things like that like um, 
as far as Insta and Facebook, I, I know like Facebook is pretty old. Is I think my past is pretty old school now, but you know, what are your thoughts around like the whole, you know, age demographics and those different, those different platforms as far as who that I would most likely be best, be best aimed at. Sure. So I'll break this answer down into a couple of things. So first is uh, TikTok. Yes, is certainly a younger audience. Um, I've been, I signed up uh, a couple of months ago now um, and just using it to experiment with the platform. And it's definitely a younger audience. There are some older as, you know, any ad early adopters would agree with. Um, but TikTok, yeah, it's good. It, it probably could grow something. But my question to you is, um, knowing your audience, why, where are they actually searching for a solution to the problem that you're solving? Because if they're, you know, if they're looking on Facebook and they're scrolling on Facebook, is that going to, are your ads going to be enough of a pattern interrupt for them to stop scrolling and actually recognize enough of the problem? Or are they looking somewhere else first specifically for the, for the answer to their problem? So if they're searching something on Google, maybe YouTube would be a better platform to answer questions and give them more of a solution because that's intertwined right in with Google. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't really aware of that, but I'm new to, new to all this media stuff so yeah, yeah thanks for that well, i hope that helps yeah thank you awesome. and just to jump in you know because we're talking about tiktok i remember ben asked a bit earlier where might be a good um what might be a good platform for 20 that 20 something group would you say uh, tiktok might be a good platform for him oh tiktok's a great platform for that yeah yeah if you if you've ever been on the platform you can see people doing all the silly dances and the, and the entire age demographic on there um, and it's definitely fitting within that market. Yep, nice. That's why I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do a naked dance on TikTok. <laughs> definitely. We're going to turn the video off for that one. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just stop streaming and then we'll comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Well, I think we're good. Well, Ryan, absolute pleasure. Oh, Estelle, I think you've got a question. Last one. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know um, if you had any tips on how to put together a an effective script for a video, especially for, for YouTube. Yeah. Uh, what's your main subject? Um, binge eating support and emotional eating. Okay. Um, so I can see you now. I've changed, <laughs> changed screen. Um, so in terms of putting a script together, uh, look at a specific problem that your audience is facing and then break that down. Okay. So instead of saying, you know, binge eating, it might be, how do you stop overeating junk food? Yep. And look at that as one specific topic. So sort of look at the high level and then just go deep with it. Um, and then do a specific series around stopping eating junk food. Um, how do you get the motivation to go out and exercise more? Um, what the benefit of exercise exercising more could do to stop you eating kind of like going against that, uh, going with that counterintuitive approach um, and breaking the subjects down into, into a lot more different subjects. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Uh, Greg, did you have a question? I, I saw your hand up a little bit earlier. Yeah, it was just a comment. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for, for all of your knowledge and expertise as well. Um, a lot of the people I noticed on LinkedIn, uh, well, I'm not on Facebook, to be honest, but it seems like they're putting a lot of personal things on LinkedIn instead of a lot of business. Is that because they're trying to get more of a, I suppose, an emotional reaction or is that just the way that you think the platform's moving? Um, in terms of regular posting, yeah, they could be doing that more for a personal brand and personal connection type. Right. Um, rather than being purely focused on business, they get to know the person as a person um, mm. because there is that trend that continues to grow and continues to happen now that um, personal approaches and authenticity are something that's always sort of being favored and getting a lot more reaction. Mm.